and let us begin as we talk about the interlude with Pimpinets. Now, last we left our heroes, Mango, Arvin, and Cutlass. All three of them are in a town. Uh, I believe it was the town of Arise, who were on the continent, continent of Hutas. Um, and you were kind of on the coast. You had just arrived by boat. You were there, supposedly, on a bit of a holiday. It's supposed to be a bit of a vacation, as you were. You all arrived here, and you were enjoying the festival. You were playing games and having a lot of fun. And you took a break. You went to kind of the uh, bar tent, if you will, in this place. And you all got a me uh, cup of mead or mango, your cup of sugar water. You all are sitting around there, and Arvin, something doesn't feel right. Something in the air just... It's not dusty enough for you. It's too clean. You kind of look around, and you notice a figure has sat down beside you guys. She's a young-looking woman with long wavy black hair uh, that's just just covering her face enough that you can't get a really good look at her she stands at probably about six foot so taller woman she's kind of slender uh, from her hand you can see how pale her skin is she's in a long black flowy dress with a lot of little green designs in it it's actually fairly beautiful but as you look a little closer you realize those waves aren't decoration like just kind of someone took a paintbrush and went. No, those waves are snakes. And something in your mind clicks and the hair on the back of your dusty head stands to attention immediately. She slowly turns her head to you and smiles. You see her two canines are fangs, more like. Her eyes have slits. Very serpentine. She stands up and starts walking away. Do you say anything? Is indeed what you think. Cutlass is standing next to you. He's trying to ask you about uh, how to properly drink this flavor of mead. Uh, and you're a little bit distracted. Something seems off. And you can't get that eerie feeling out of you. A little bit goes by. You all play some more games. And Arvin, once again... Knowing that you have a connection to the sliver of good that still lives within the serpent, as you kind of look up and you look to her, she's standing there once again. She's looking right at you. Her smile is wicked. Her eyes are glinting green. And you see it almost looks like her flesh is starting to turn black and wither. And as it does, you see a green shimmer. It looks like venom, almost. Pure. It's starting to encompass her. And out of a humanish looking body, maybe Alvin, I'm not too sure, comes a massive serpent. That's her. You know it. And as you stare her down, the beast you swore to destroy you just hear her voice. I told you I was coming, Arvin! Her maw opens. You, Mango, Cutlass, Old Duke, and the sheep, you're all standing there. And in that moment, you see green. Is it venom? No. No, it can't be. 
Arvin, you turn your head, and Mango, you do as well. You had not paid this woman any mind. You weren't really looking. And then you saw Arvin's face. You turned. You saw the woman. And you then saw the venom start encompassing her. You realized what was happening, but it was too late to run. Cutlass 2 saw this. And as he stood there, staring her down. Mango, you, you were always more perceptive than Arvin, correct? Mango, you hear this. Arvin, you're too focused on the giant serpent that has just erupted from this woman, staring you down now. Yes, but Mango, you hear Cutlass's words. He asks the stag for one more time. Give him a little bit of power. And the stag listens. You see his hands shoot up and light starts coming from him. A green barrier of nature magic starts encompassing not all of them, just Arvin and just me. Just you two. He didn't have enough power to shield the others. We don't know what happened to them. Hopefully the shield maybe was enough, but things are happening too fast. You can't tell. You both now are looking at and you both are watching as his expression, even though his, he is a warforged and there shouldn't be an expression on his face, you see a smile as he turns to you. He tells you to go. And as he does, you see ant spectral green antlers. <laughs> to the west filled with beautiful sequoias and lush green landscapes and you are standing at a grove you're at a campsite for one reason or another you have stumbled upon here this night and suddenly you see a green bubble of magical energy fly <laughs> into the earth it stops right where well this big uh, crater is and inside you see two figures and that is where we will leave it until our next session <laughs>